Okay lang sa inyo ganyan para ma ano ko yung cursor ma move ko siya. Bak nakikita din yung cursor kapag po napaano. Napapresentors. Okay lang siya na ganyan ang ano image or I will Ano ba yun? Slide show doc. Ayan yun, pwede pala. Pwede pala. So the thorax or the chest is the region of the body between the neck and the abdomen. This is the chest, this is the neck, and this is the abdomen. The TV. So the structures of the chest wall, number one is the sternum. The sternum is found in the midline of the chest wall. So this is the sternum. The sternum has three parts. The first one is the manubrium sterni, this one, the body of the sternum, and the siphoid process. The siphoid process is, is a thin plate of cartilage that becomes ossified at its proximal end during adult life. This is the siphoid, the body of the sternum, and the manubrium. The joints of the sternum, number one is the manubrio, manubrio sternal joint. This is the manubrio sternal joint. This is a joint between the manubrium sterni and the body of the sternum. Number two is the siphi sternal joint. This is a joint between the body of the sternum and the siphoid process. So what are the landmarks of the sternum? Number one is the sternal angle. The sternal angle or the angle of blue. This is the supra, <clears throat> this is the sternal angle. This is the supra sternal notch. The sternal angle lies at the level of the second rib. This is the sternal angle, it lies at the level of the second rib. And between the fourth and the fifth thoracic vertebra posteriorly. Another landmark is the suprasternal notch. This is the suprasternal notch. It is the superior border of the manubrium sterni. It lies at the level of the second thoracic vertebra. Another structure of the thorax are the ribs. So there are 12 pairs of ribs. So these are the ribs. The ribs are categorized into three. The true ribs, the true ribs has one, sternal attachment. The false ribs, these are the false ribs, eight, nine, and 10, and the floating ribs, 11 and 12. The true ribs, rib 1 to 7, are attached anteriorly to the sternum. The false ribs, 8, 9, and 10 ribs, are attached to each other and to the seventh rib by their costal cartilages. The 8, 9, and 10 ribs are attached to the seventh rib via the costal cartilages. The eleventh, the eleventh and twelfth ribs has no anterior attachment. That's why they are called floating ribs. The 
the types of ribs. First one is the typical rib and the atypical rib. The typical rib has a head, a head, neck, tubercle, the shaft, and the angle of the rib. At its inferior end, there's the costal groove found within this groove are the intercostal vessels and nerves. The typical rib is the first rib. This is the typical rib. This is the typical rib. The typical, the typical rib is small, flattened from above downward. Attached to the superior surface of the typical rib is the scalenous anterior muscle. Anteriorly related to the muscle is the subclavian vein. And posterior to the muscle are the lower trunks of the brachial plexus and the subclavian artery. Another structure of the chest are the costal cartilages. These are the costal cartilages. They are bars of cartilage connecting the upper seven ribs to the sternum, the upper seven ribs to the sternum, the eighth, ninth, and tenth rib to the seventh rib under costal cartilage. The eighth, ninth, and three, tenth costal cartilage are attached to the seventh rib and costal cartilage. So these are the costal cartilages. The function of the costal cartilage, it contributes to the elasticity of the chest wall. What are the cavities of the thorax? Number one is the mediastinum. This is the mediastinum. It is the median partition where the heart is located. Number two are the pleural cavities. These are the pleural cavities. It is formed on each side of the thorax between the lungs. Between the lungs, this is the lungs. And the chest wall. Lining the chest wall is the pure parietal pleura. And lining of the lungs is the visceral pleura. So between is the pleural, pleural space or the pleural cavity. What are the joints of the chest wall? Number one is the manubrio sternal joint. Number two, the siphi sternal joint. Number three, the joint of the rib head with the body, with the body of the vertebra or the vertebral body. It's a joint between the rib head and the vertebral body. The first, the 10th, 11th, and 12th ribs articulate to the corresponding vertebral body. For example, the uh, rib number five, or num rib number one articulates with the first thoracic vertebra. However, the second to the ninth rib articulate with the corresponding vertebral body and the vertebral body above. So from two to ninth, the head articulates with the corresponding vertebral body and to the vertebral body above. Number four, the joint of the rib tubercle, this is the rib tubercle, with the transverse process of the corresponding vertebra. Number five, the joint of the rib with the costal cartilages. Number six, the joint of the costal cartilage, the costal cartilage with the sternum. These two joints 
are fibrous joints, cart cartilaginous joints. <clears throat> and there is no movement possible in these joints. The opening of the thorax. Number one is the thoracic outlet. This is the thoracic outlet. It is an opening of the chest with the root of the neck. This is the thoracic outlet. It is bounded posteriorly by the vertebral body. First vertebral body, T1. Laterally by the costal cartilage and the first rib and medially by the manubrium sternum. Superiorly it is bounded by the suprapleural membrane. The thoracic cavity is separated from the abdomen by the diaphragm. So this is the diaphragm viewed from above. Or this, this is the superior view. This is the diaphragm. This is the pericardium. From the inferior view, this is the diaphragm which is opening. The cable opening, the esophageal opening, and the aortic opening. Another structure, the intercostal spaces. Between the intercostal spaces are three muscles of respiration. The external intercostal, the internal intercostal muscles, and the innermost intercostal muscle or the transversus thoracis muscle. The layers of the chest wall from the outside to inside are the skin, the subcutaneous tissue, the chest muscle or the serratus anterior muscle, the external intercostal muscle, the internal intercostal muscle, the innermost intercostal muscle, and the thoracic fascia and the parietal pleura. So these are the layers of the chest wall from the skin, from the skin, the subcutaneous tissue, the serratus anterior muscle, The ex external, external intercostal, internal intercostal, the innermost intercostal, the endothoracic fascia, endothoracic fascia, and the parietal pleura. Is the parietal pleura. Found in the inferior part of the rib is the costal groove. This is the costal groove. Within, within are found the structures which are arranged from above. The intercostal vein, intercostal artery, and the intercostal nerve. The action of the intercostal muscles These are the intercostal muscles. This is the external intercostal, the internal intercostal, and the transversus thoracis or the innermost intercostal. The action of the intercostal muscles. If the first rib is fixed by contraction of the muscles of the neck, the first intercostal muscle elevate the second to the twelfth rib to the first rib. This happens during inspiration. If the 12th rib is fixed by contraction of the quadratus lumborum muscle, the first to the 11th ribs will be lowered by contraction of the intercostal muscles. This happens during expiration.
the nerve supply corresponds to the intercostal nerve. The blood supply comes from the posterior intercostal artery and the uh, and two anterior intercostal arteries. The posterior intercostal artery supplying the first and the second intercostal spaces are branches of the superior intercostal artery. The superior intercostal artery is a branch of the costocervical trunk which is a branch of the subclavian artery. While the third to the 11th intercostal artery are branches of the descending thoracic aorta. The, inter the anterior intercostal artery of the first and the sixth intercostal spaces are branches of the internal thoracic artery while the lower six intercostal spaces are branches of the musculophrenic artery, which is a branch of the internal thoracic artery. The venous drainage, the posterior intercostal veins drains to the ascygus vein, Asigus vein on the right and uh, hemiasigus vein on the left. The nerve to supply comes from the intercostal nerves. The first to the sixth intercostal nerves are distributed within the intercostal spaces. However, the seventh to the ninth intercostal nerves enters the abdominal wall. The 10th and 11th intercostal nerves pass directly to the abdominal wall. While the 12th thoracic nerve lies in the abdomen and it is referred to as the subcostal nerve. What are the branches of the intercostal nerve? The, the first one is the ramai communicantes to the sympathetic ganglion. Second one, a collateral branch to the main nerve below. The third, the lateral cutaneous branch, which supplies the skin on the side of the chest. Number four, it has an anterior cutaneous branch, which supplies the skin on the midline. Number five, it has muscular branches to the intercostal muscles. These are the branches of the intercostal nerves, the ramai communicantes, lateral cutaneous branch, anterior cutaneous branch. It is a pleural sensory branch to the parietal pleura and the peritoneal branch to the parietal peritoneum. For the lymphatic drainage, uh, anteriorly, the lymph drains uh, to the anterior axillary node above the umbilicus. Anteriorly, above the umbilicus, all the lymph drains to the anterior axillary nodes. Posteriorly, the lymph drains to the posterior axillary node. Below the umbilicus, all drains to the superficial inguinal nodes. So anteriorly, all the lymph drains to the anterior axillary node. Posteriorly, to the posterior axillary node. And inferiorly, Below the diaph below the umbilicus drains to the superficial inguinal nodes. Another important structure of the chest wall is the diaphragm. The diaphragm is the most important muscle of respiration. So it consists of a peripheral muscular part and the central tendon. 
This is the central tendon of the diaphragm. It has the peripheral muscular part. This one, this is the muscular part. The central tendon and the muscular part of the diaphragm. The nerve supply comes from the phrenic nerve for the motor. However, for the sensory, the phrenic nerve supplies only the central part of the diaphragm, superiorly and inferiorly. So meaning the plural, from the pleural side and the peritoneal side. However, the lower six intercostal nerves supplies the peripheral part of the diaphragm. So the action of the diaphragm on contraction, it pulls down the central tendon and increases the vertical diameter of the thorax during inspiration. So the lung follows and the lung expands it increase its vertical diameter as air enter during inspiration. The functions of the diaphragm is a muscle of inspiration, muscle of abdominal straining, it is a weight lifting muscle and it serves as a thoracoabdominal pump. There are three main openings of the diaphragm. The first one is diortic. Diortic opening lies at the level of the 12 thoracic vertebra and it transmits the aorta, the thoracic duct, and the ascygos vein. This is the aortic opening. Aortic opening. The supageal opening lies at the level of the 10th thoracic vertebra. And it transmits the esophagus, the vagus nerve, the lift gastric vessels, lymphatics from the lower third of the esophagus. Another opening is the cable opening. This is the esophageal opening. And this is the cable opening. The cable opening lies at the level of the eighth thoracic vertebra and it transmits the inferior, inferior vena cava and the right phrenic nerve. Another structure is the internal thoracic artery. The internal thoracic artery is a branch of the first part of the subclavian artery. It ends in the sixth intercostal space by dividing into the superior epigastric artery and the musculophrenic artery. So what are the branches of the internal thoracic artery? The first one is the perforating artery which accompany the intercostal nerve and supplies the intercostal spaces. Number two, the pericardiophrenic artery. This accompany the phrenic nerve and supplies the pericardium. Number three, the mediastinal artery. This supplies the anterior mediastinum. Number four, the musculophrenic art artery and this supplies the lower intercostal spaces. Another branch, the anterior intercostal artery, supplies the upper six intercostal spaces. The internal intercostal vein corresponds to the artery, so it drains to the brachiocephalic vein. So this is the internal thoracic artery, which is with the two terminal branches, the superior epigastric supplying the rectus anterior abdominal wall, and the musculophrenic artery supplying the lower six intracostal spaces. What are the muscles of the chest? So, uh, table two summarizes the muscle of the chest. 
uh, in the external intercostal muscles, the internal intercostals, the innermost intercostals, the diaphragm. In addition, the levator costarum muscle, which is an inspiratory muscle, as well as the serratus posterior superior muscle, also an inspiratory muscle, and the serratus posterior inferior muscle, an expiratory muscle. For the surface anatomy, the side sternal joint, this is the side sternal joint between the body of the sternum and the siphoid process. It lies at the level of the ninth thoracic vertebra. The subcostal angle, this is the subcostal angle. This area. It is found at the inferior end of the sternum between the sternal attachment of the seven costal cartilages. While the subcostal margin is found at the lower border of the thorax. This is the costal margin. Subcostal angle. The nipple in men lies at the level of the fourth intercostal space, 10 centimeters from the midline, while the apex bit of the heart is found At the fifth intercostal space, nine centimeters from the midline, the apex bit is formed by the left, left ventricle. The axillary folds. The anterior axillary fold is formed by the lower border of the pectoralis major muscle, while the posterior axillary fold is formed by the tendon of the latissimus dorsi muscle. The vertebral prominence formed by the seventh cervical vertebra. It is the first spinous process to be felt behind the neck while the The first to the sixth cervical vertebra are covered by ligamentum nuke. So it is not built on palpation. The groove behind the neck is referred to as the nuchal groove. Another structure is the scapula or the shoulder blade. It is a flat and triangular bone in the posterior chest. This is the scapula. The superior angle of the scapula lies at the level of the second thoracic vertebra, while the spine of the scapula lies at the level of the third thoracic vertebra and the inferior angle lies at the level of the seventh thoracic vertebra. The lines of orientation. The first one is the mid-sternal line. This is the mid-sternal line. The mid-sternal line is a median line over the sternum. Another is the mid-clavicular line. This is the mid-clavicular line. It's a line that runs downward from the midpoint or the middle of the clavicle downward. 
The anterior axillary line is a vertical line downward from the anterior axillary fold. The posterior axillary line is a vertical line downward from the posterior axillary fold. So the mid axillary line is the line between the anterior and the posterior axillary line. Well, the scapular line is a line that passes through the inferior angle, the inferior angle of the scapula. The scapular line. In the surface anatomy, uh, the trachea extends from the cricoid part cartilage at the level of the sixth cervical vertebra to the sternal angle or T2, T4 and 5 second rib. For the lungs, the lungs, <clears throat> the lungs can be mapped out on the anterior chest. And for the a, number one, for the apex of the lungs, it is a line drawn upward from the sternoclavicular joint, sternoclavicular joint. 2.5 centimeters above between the mid middle third, medial third, and the intermediate third of the clavicle. So this is the apex from the sternoclavicular joint, 2.5 centimeters above to the level of the <coughs> clavicle, medial, junction of medial and intermediate third. The anterior border of the lung stands from the sternoclavicular joint, midline, to the sternal angle. From the sternoclavicular joint to the sternal angle, then downward to, to the sternal joint. However, for the for the left, left lung, on the level of the fourth costal cartilage, it deviates laterally to form the deviates laterally to form the cardiac notch. The lower border of the lung in mid-inspiration cross the sixth rib at the mid-clavicular line, the eighth rib at the mid-axillary line, and the tenth rib adjacent to the vertebral column. Well, for the pleura, the parietal pleural reflection is the same with the lung, but the lower border crosses the eighth rib at mid clavicular line, tenth rib at the mid axillary line, and the twelfth rib adjacent to the vertebra. So the space between the lung and the pleura, the space between corresponds to the Costo diaphragmatic races. Costo diaphragmatic races. For the surface anatomy of the heart, the heart may be considered to have an apex, an apex, and four borders. The apex is formed by the left ventricle. The apex bit is formed in the fifth intercostal space, 
nine centimeters from the midline. It is found fifth intercostal space, nine centimeters from the midline. The superior border of the heart is the superior border of the heart are formed by the roots of the great blood vessels. It extends from the second from the second right costal cartilage 1.3 centimeters from the edge of the sternum left second costal cartilage 1.3 centimeters from the sternum to the third right costal cartilage 1.3 centimeters from the edge of the sternum. While the right border is formed by the right atrium the right border and it extends from the right right third costal cartilage to the sixth costal cartilage 1.3 centimeters from the edge of the sternum the left border is formed <clears throat> by the left ventricle. It extends from the second costal cartilage to the apex bit. Well, the inferior border is formed by the right ventricle. This is the right, the inferior border formed by the right ventricle. It extends from the apex bit to the sixth Costal cartilage, right, 1.3 centimeters from the midline. The thoracic blood vessels are the arch of the aorta, the roots of the brachycephalic vessels, and the left common carotid artery are found behind the manubrium sterni, and the internal thoracic vessels. The internal thoracic vessels run vertically downward posterior to the costal cartilage, 1.3 centimeters lateral to the edge of the sternum, as far as the sixth intercostal space. Another structure is the mammary gland. In young adult female, it overlies the second to the sixth rib. Second to the sixth rib, from the lateral margin of the sternum, to the mid axillary line. For the clinical notes, the sternum possesses red hematopoietic marrow and it is a common site for bone marrow biopsy. Uh, while sternotomy is a surgical procedure, where the sternum may be split at operation to allow the surgeon to gain access to the heart, the great vessels, and the thymus. Sternotomy means opening up the sternum. And the thoracic, number two is the thoracic outlet syndrome. Uh, because of the close relationship of the brachial plexus, the subclavian artery and the subclavian vein to the first rib and clavicle as it enter the upper limb, the vessels and nerves may be compressed between the bones. It can cause pain, pressure on the lower trunk of the brachial plexus, producing pain down the medial side of the forearm and hand and wasting of the small muscles of the hand. Pressure on the blood vessels may compromise the circulation of the upper limb and sometimes it may produce ischemia. This is the 
thoracic outlet. This is the first rib. This is the scalenus anterior muscle. Anterior to the muscle is the subclavian vein. Posterior to the muscle are the subclavian artery and the lower trunk of the brachial plexus. So supposedly this, this is the, the clavicle. And the structures may be compressed with a thoracic outlet syndrome. Another condition, a cervical rib. It is a rib arising from the anterior tubercle of the transverse process of the seventh cervical vertebra. So the clinical significance of a, vert of a cervical rib is that it can cause pressure on the lower trunk of the brachial plexus and subclavian artery and vein, producing symptoms seen in cases of thoracic outlet syndromes. So meaning the pain on the medial side of the arm, wasting of the muscles of the hand. Rib excision is commonly performed by a thoracic surgeon during sternotomy or thoracotomy to gain entrance to the thoracic cavity. Excision means removal. Number five, a referred pain. The seventh to the eleventh intercostal nerves, after supplying the intercostal space, intercostal spaces, leave the chest and enters the anterior abdominal wall. The clinical importance, this is in the thoracic wall may be experienced as pain that extends across the costal margin into the anterior abdominal wall. The pain in the abdomen is referred to as a referred pain. Another condition, the hair face soster or shingles. Uh, it is caused by reactivation of the latent Baracella soster virus in a patient who previously had chicken pox. The lesion is seen as inflammation and degeneration of the sensory neurons in a cranial or spinal nerves with formation of vesicles. The first symptom is a band of dermatomal pain in the distribution of sensory neurons in a spinal thoracic nerves, and it is later followed by skin eruption. Intercostal nerve block. The 7th to the 11th intercostal nerve supplies the skin, the parietal peritoneum, and anterior abdominal wall. So intercostal nerve block, meaning blocking of the nerve with an anesthetic. Intercostal nerve block of the 7th to the 11th intercostal nerves may also anesthetize these areas, meaning this area of the skin of the anterior abdominal wall. Indication for intercostal nerve block, a repair of laceration of the thoracic and abdominal wall, relief of pain and rib fracture, and to allow pain-free respiratory movements in a patient with rib fractures. The procedure, the needle is inserted toward the rib near the lower border and the tip is directed to the subcostal groove and the local anesthetics is injected around the nerve. So for the complication, number one is pneumothorax. This happens if the needle penetrate deeply through the parietal pleura and lungs so that air may escape into the pleural cavity. So the presence of air in the pleural cavity is referred to as pneumothorax. Well, another complication is hemorrhage. If the intercostal blood vessels are punctured during needle insertion, blood may escape to the pleural cavity 
when the presence of blood in the pleural cavity is referred to as hemothorax. Number seven, uh, traumatic injury to the thorax. It's a common, is common as a result of vehicular accident. Number one, fractured sternum. They occur in high-speed motor vehicle accident. Uh, severe contusion of the heart on impact because of the heart's location posterior to the sternum. So that's number two. Rib contusion. Rib bruising is the most common rib injury secondary to trauma. It is a painful condition secondary to small hemorrhages beneath the periosteum. Number three, rib fracture. It is a common chest injury. The rib tend to break at the weakest part, which is the angle of the rib. The jagged ends of the fractured rib may penetrate the lungs and presents as pneumothorax or air in the pleural space. A severe localized pain is the most important symptom and it is necessary to relieve the pain by an intercostal nerve block. Another condition secondary to trauma is flail chest. In severe crush injuries, the stabi stability of the chest is lost. There is fracture of the rib near the ang rib angle posteriorly and the costochondral junction anteriorly. Uh, a section of the chest wall is disconnected from the rest of the thoracic wall. The flail segment is sucked in during inspiration and driven out during expiration, producing paradoxical and ineffective respiratory movements. Needle thoracostomy is a surgical procedure. It's necessary in patient with tension pneumothorax for the presence of air in the pleural cavity producing pressure. So needle thoracostomy or introduction of needle into the pleural space can be done anteriorly, the anterior approach. Uh, while the patient in supine position, the needle is inserted in the second intercostal space, second intercostal space, mid clavicular line. So these are the structures that the needle will penetrate. For the lateral approach, the needle is inserted in the second intercostal space, anterior axillary line. So, so the needle passes the following structure as it passes through the chest wall, the skin, subcutaneous tissue, uh, serratus anterior, the external intercostal, internal intercostal, Transversus thoracis, endothoracic fascia, and the parietal pleura. After that is the pleural cavity or the pleural space. Tube thoracostomy is another uh, surgical procedure. It is the introduction to the pleural cavity of a tube. The preferred site for insertion is the fourth or fifth intercostal space anterior axillary line or the mid axillary line. So this, this, the same structures are penetrated by the tube. The purpose of this is to drain blood in patients with hemothorax and to drain air in a patients with pneumothorax or pleural effusion or, or pus, pleural effusion presence of fluid uh, serous fluid, while pyothorax presence of pus in the chest, chest cavity. Thoracotomy is a surgical procedure, meaning opening of the thoracic cavity. 
It is a life-saving procedure in a patient with penetrating chest wound with uncontrollable hemorrhage. This is to gain access to the chest to control the bleeding vessel, usually a major blood vessel in the chest. So an incision is made over the fourth or the fifth intercostal space. So these are the tissues that will be incised. The skin subcutaneous, serratus anterior, external intercostal, internal intercostal, transversus thoracis in the thoracic fascia and the parietal pleura. High cup or cyclo, this is referred to in our dialect. Is the involuntary spasmodic contraction of the diaphragm. Common in normal individual after eating or drinking as a result of gastric irritation of the vagus nerve endings. Or it may be a symptom of pleurisy. Pleurisy is inflammation of the parietal pleura. Peritonitis, inflammation of the parietal peritoneum, pericarditis of the pericardium. Inflammation of the pericardium or in patient with uremia. In patients with renal failure. Paralysis of diaphragm is secondary to injury to the nerve, to the phrenic nerve in the neck during uh, neck surgery. The accessory phrenic nerve may be injured also. The contribution from the fifth cervical spinal nerve joined the phrenic nerve late as a branch from the nerve to the subclavius muscle. So then this nerve may be injured and may result to paralysis. Coronary artery disease. The saphenous vein is the graft most commonly used to bypass a plugged artery. So, however, the internal thoracic artery may be used to revascularize the myocardium by joining its distal cut end to, to a coronary artery. For the clinical examination of the chest, a physician will be examining the chest to detect evidence of disease. It consists of inspection, palpation, percussion, and auscultation. On inspection, it will show the configuration of the chest and the respiratory movements or any asymmetry or bulging masses in the chest. Palpation will reveal abnormal pulsations, masses in the chest or in the breast, and also tender or painful areas in the chest. While percussion or tapping of the chest, an air-containing organ like the lungs will produce a resonant note, while a solid organ like the heart will produce a dull note. So the lungs will produce a resonant note, the heart, a solid organ, will produce a dull note. While auscultation enables the physician to listen to the breath sounds as it enters and leaves the respiratory passages, the rate and rhythm of the heart can be confirmed by an auscultation. The position of the heart may be also appreciate, appreciated. Uh, the apex bit may be displaced in an enlarged heart. The normal location of the apex bit is fifth intercostal space, mid clavicular line, or nine centimeters from the midline. For the pleural reflection, the cervical doom of the pleura and the apex of the lungs extends up into the neck. It is here that it is vulnerable to stab wound in the root of the neck. The lower li limit of the pleural reflection may be damaged during nephrectomy. Nephrectomy is a procedure removal of the kidney. So the pleural, parietal pleura crosses the 12th rib 
posterior and may be damaged during removal of the kidney. Uh, another condition, diaphragmatic hernia. So there are two types of hernia, the congenital and the acquired hernia. The congenital hernia occurs as a result of incomplete fusion of the septum transversarum, dorsal mesentery, and the pleuroperitoneal membranes from the body ball during the development of the diaphragm. So, the second one is an acquired hernia, it's acquired diaphragmatic hernia. This may occur in the middle aged people with weak musculature around the esophageal opening in the diaphragm. So there are two types of, of diaphragmatic hernia. The sliding esophageal hernia and the paraesophageal hernia. In sliding esophageal hernia, the gastroesophageal junction protrudes in the chest, while in the paraesophageal, only part of the stomach protrudes while the gastroesophageal junction remains below the diaphragm. This is a sliding hernia. The gastroesophageal junction is displaced upward, while in parasophageal, only part of the stomach protrudes, while the gastroesophageal junction remains within the abdominal cavity. And Stop sharing.